Hi, my name is Lucas Marcellos, and this is my Greek Cassidy presentation on prohibition and organized crime. The government were very naive in their attempt to ban the sale and importation of alcohol and think that the public would just go along with it. In fact, the implementation of prohibition in the United States promoted the illegal activities of organized crime to a new level. When I sell liquor, it's called bootlegging. When my patrons serve it on Lakeshore Drive, it's called hospitality, Al Capone. Prohibition was a law that the government passed in the hopes that it would give people lives enriched with positive morals and encourage positive interactions with family and friends. The movement to bring prohibition to law was led by women's and religious organizations. The idea was that there would be no consumption of alcohol because the sale and importation would be illegal, so therefore it would not be available to the public. What the government and movement groups did not count on was that people would not just accept the law and stop their consumption of alcohol. The public had to invent creative ways in order to still obtain alcohol. Alcohol became something that was hidden only, hidden and only consumed behind closed doors with people that could be trusted and could keep a secret. Above all, many Americans with the taste for liquor were determined to get a hold of a drink one way or another. At this point in history, alcohol was not recognized as an addictive substance, so there was no thought of those who were alcoholics. Drinking alcohol for these people is, as we know now, part of an illness, and the answer to this illness is not just withdraw the substance. In Detroit, Tandalinsky closed the Canadian border smugglers, used false floorboards in automobiles, second gas tanks, hidden compartments, even false bottom shopping baskets and suitcases. Not to, mention, not to mention camping flash flasks and hot water bottles, as one account has it to bring alcohol into the city. People can be very creative when it comes to the fact that it, when it com comes to something that they want, especially if it's considered illegal. The Great Gatsby, written by F. Fitz, F. Scott Fitzgerald, takes place in the 1920s during the Prohibition time. The story is about wealthy people and the alcohol flowed freely in the social circles. It was at one point in the party of the Gatsby's house that Nick described the alcohol that was available to all the all of the guests. In the main hall, a bar of the real brass rail was set up and stocked with the gins and liquors and with cor cordials so long forgotten that the most of the female guests were too young to know what one from another. For the rich people, the limitations of prohibition did not seem to affect them. During a summer out outing, Daisy requested Tom bring out the refreshments that he brought. There was no hesitation or be or no hesitation begin care or begin careful with the bottle or being careful with the bottle that he brought. He enrolled the bottle of whiskey from a towel and put it on the on the table. Tom put the whiskey on the table in a matter of of a fact kind of way. Introducing a law that affects some people that live in the country needs careful planning, and part of that would include that they include how they were going to uphold prohibition. There was an inadequate amount of enforcement officers available to, available to police prohibition and prevent organized crime. To, yeah. Almost incredibly, only 1,500 federal agents were given the job of enforcing prohibition. That is, about 30 for every state in the Union. There were only three federal agencies, as well as state and local police, that were given the responsibility of policing the public with regards to the prohibition law. The prohibition law itself was not just being broken by the public but also by the member of the government. And somehow it speaks volume that when the Michigan State Police raided one Detroit bar, they found the local congressman, the local sheriff, and the city's mayor all enjoying a drink. Corrupt officers recognized that there, were many, that there was money to be made by the prohibition, and they all took bribes to look the other way. There was an interesting turn of events that happened because of the prohibition. The existence of crook, crooked officials was not new, but up to this point, they controlled the actions of the criminals when prohibition hit. The members of the gangs got 
together and organized themselves so they worked different areas but had a common goal. They in turn started to control the members of the government. There was evidence in the Great Gatsby that Gatsby got pulled over for speeding by the police. He showed the police officer a card and the police lets him off. When Nick questioned Gatsby, he passed it off very casually. I was able to do the commissioner a favor once and he sends me a Christmas card every year. Organized crime supplied alcohol and helped people who were out of the job as a result of the prohibition. It was not just the lack of alcohol that affected people. When bars and distilleries closed, people lost their livelihoods, and some were forced to join crime organizations just to provide for their families. Stills were, were being operated by people who were being controlled by organized crime. This picture illustrates some of the homemade operations that were being confiscated by police during Prohibition times. As mentioned earlier, organized crime bosses were quick to develop themselves into territories for the acquiring and distributing of alcohol. With legitimate bars and breweries out of business, someone had to step up to the fuel to feel the substantial thirst of Roaring Twenties and one was better equipped than the mobsters. Unknown to the government, the Mafia had begun building their business so that they were ready for the prohibition came when the <laughs> ready for when the prohibition came into effect. From the very beginning, criminals uh, recognized that prohibition represents a marvelous business opportunity. In major cities, indeed gangs had indeed gangs had quietly been stockpiling booze supplies for weeks. When the gangsters organized themselves and cooperated to grow each other's businesses, it, it then became syndic syndicated crime, which can, which we can attribute to the prohibition law. There are violent people who solve issues with criminal activity. From Los Angeles to Chicago to New York, organized crime syndicates supplied speakeasies and underground establishments with large quantities of beer and liquor. Squeakeasies are the illegal drinking establishments that were formed during this era. Gatsby himself was involved in alcohol racketeering. It is how he gained wealth quickly and apparently it was known that he was into bootlegging but he never got caught by officials. He, he and his wolf shame bought up a lot of side street drug stores here, side street drug stores here in Chicago and sold grain alcohol over the counter. It is interesting that even even though Gatsby was wealthy like Tom, Tom looked down on Gatsby and scorned the method that by which he made his money, which was breaking which which was the breaking point for Daisy. Perhaps because bootlegging is illegal it but Tom is not an honest not it not an honest upstanding citizen himself, so perhaps he shouldn't have been looking down on Gatsby. One of the most famous crime bosses of the era was Al Capone. For all his illegal activities, he was still respected for the good that he did for the people. He opened soup kitchens to feed the poor and hired people into his organization to give people jobs. Gatsby commented that he hired one of Tom's friends, so perhaps Tom shouldn't be so judgmental. He came to us as us dead broke. He was very glad to pick up some mo money, old sport. Prohibition lasted from 1920 to 1933. At that point, Franklin Roosevelt published it. It was. It has been been shown that the prohibition did not do what it meant to do, and in fact, had some lasting negative effects on society. The idea behind prohibition was to help people live good lives lives, free of spirits, which were considered negative influences. Instead, it elevated organized crime to a new level and encouraged people to partake in illegal activities just to survive. Let's see the references for the images. That's it. That's the presentation. Thank you for listening and watching.
Oh, I want to add out the end. I don't know if you're still there, but uh, I had sent 